because Toothless Sally is also out there. Toothless Sally poops behind the oak tree. That's not cool. Hey, whether you hate or like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because sometimes or someday we might come out with something you actually like. Hey there, I'm Jason, otherwise known as the Linky Lefty 27. I do all these videos about sleep and CPAP, and often I will get someone. This is uh, from uh, Babs from uh, Babs from Bakersfield. Anyway, Babs wanted me to know about this video from Dr. Axe, and Dr. Axe kind of concerns me because he has 710,000 subscribers. That's like 700,000 subscribers more than me, so he's got a little more push behind him if someone gets pissed off. But you know what? Honesty is the best policy, so we'll go ahead and review this. Now, he makes uh, some pretty hefty claims. The title of this is Natural Treatments for Sleep Apnea. That's a big claim. What Dr. Axe also has here, food is medicine. I think food's just sustenance. Let's hear what Dr. Axe has to say, and I'll go ahead and pause this and start up again when necessary. So, you know what? I feel weird about doing this because YouTube was originally founded uh, with cat videos. So, it started off with cat videos, and it kind of went into response videos. This is a response video. Response videos are like totally done. It's like the least cool thing you could do and I'm doing it. So cat videos, response videos. I've had cats in my videos, so I guess this is a natural progression. This isn't about me. Uh, I don't know at all. I'm just gonna respond to this because people wanna know what I thought of this. If you have a differing opinion, please comment down below. Call me a jerk, call me a dick hat, a wiener biter, whatever you need to call me to feel better, do it. It's not gonna bother me. Uh, if you agree with what I have to say, perfect. Hey, whether you hate or like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because sometimes or someday we might come out with something you actually like. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, Dr. Axe here, doctor of natural medicine and founder of DrAxe.com. I have free CPAP advice.com, but I mean, who's comparing? Mine's better. This video, I'm going to go through a seven step process on how to overcome sleep apnea. And if you struggle with sleep apnea, snoring, insomnia, just trouble sleeping at night, these tips are gonna help you big time. Number one thing you've got. Dude, I am so excited right now. Start doing if you wanna overcome sleep apnea is look at your diet. Sleep apnea is simply a collapse of your airway or a crowding of your airway. So this could be from an enlarged tongue, enlarged tonsils, enlarged uvula, uh, fatty tissue, uh, soft palate, sagging into the upper airway. Uh, did I already say uvula? I can't remember. But anything that's crowding your upper airway, let me say it again. Tongue, jaw sliding back, soft palate, uvula, tonsils and adenoids, or just a small airway, like your, your esophagus is just much smaller than typical. Healthy protein, such as bone broth protein, Ooh, uh, organic yum. chicken and turkey, wild caught fish, grass fed beef. Why does it all have to be grass fed and organic? Getting good quality protein is important. Number two, fiber. Getting more vegetables and fruits in your diet and whole sprouted grains such as brown rice. Hey. That's where you want to get your fiber in. Healthy fats, things like coconut oil, olive oil. Uh, I feel like I'm at Whole Foods. I thought we were talking about natural treatments for sleep apnea. This sounds like a good like supportive diet or just like a diet in general. But as far as treatment of sleep apnea treatment of sleep apnea you just need to open the airway that's all you really need to do to treat treat sleep apnea if it's obstructive sleep apnea uh, this is a good diet plan for once you've lost weight or while you're losing weight while you're treating sleep apnea in another way like with cpap or maybe an oral appliance but uh, this is weird but weird organic nuts and seeds those are some ways to get some good healthy fat in your diet. So again, focus on a healthy diet, a diet that's anti-inflammatory and that helps balance out insulin levels is going to be big when it comes to beating sleep apnea. If you have sleep apnea, you want to avoid the uh, intake of alcohol, caffeine, smoking, and also you need to be aware of sedatives. If you're taking sedatives on a regular basis, that can... Yes, as far as alcohol goes, you do need to limit consumption of that, you know, prior to bedtime. If you give yourself an hour 
per drink. You know, they always say like a 12 ounce beer, one ounce or a glass of wine or one ounce of hard liquor. If that stuff takes about an hour to get out of your system. So if you have that stuff an hour before bedtime, it should be out of your system by then. If you have it like as a nightcap, like right before, yeah, sleep apnea is rough. I used to have a great example of that showing someone coming coming off it, but the dude had a six pack before the sleep study. And this was this was planned. It was the weirdest thing ever. But you could really see it stair step up as far as his oxygen saturation levels um, as uh, the alcohol was being uh, metabolized. Really cool. But yeah, that's about the only one. The other stuff. What the, what the hell are you talking about, sir? Stay away from those things. If you're saying to yourself, "Well, I'm still going to do caffeine and alcohol," then what I would do is not do coffee. I would just do a little bit of tea, like a green tea during the day. That's weird. Coffee doesn't cause sleep apnea. If anything, it cures it because you stay awake and you don't sleep. And so again, just tone it down some. And the other thing I would do is if you are, um, if you're drinking alcohol, limit it to one glass. When you start doing more than one glass, more than one beer, more than one glass of alcohol, that's really going to affect your sleep cycle. And no more than two days a week. Like what again, about bring the alcohol stands? down because that will absolutely cause sleep apnea. Number three tip is to treat acid reflux. Many people with sleep apnea have heartburn, GERD, or acid reflux, or some type of digestive issue that's causing their sleep apnea. No! Gastroesophageal reflux disease does not cause sleep apnea. Sleep apnea will result in GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. It, it you got it totally backwards. People with OSA have reflux, have acid reflux. People with acid reflux, it does not cause sleep apnea. He's got that totally backwards, 100% backwards. All right, this is my, my post-production video of trying to explain how OSA and GERD are related, but GERD does not cause obstructive sleep apnea. It's obstructive sleep apnea that causes GERD. And so this is the best graphic I could find um, that kind of shows what I'm talking about. So this is, if you ever have a sleep study, uh, this is what it looks like. This is one epic of sleep, which is 30 seconds. And so your sleep study is made up of like over 900 pages of this stuff. So what you see here, hopefully you can see my cursor on the side. The top two are eyes. This one's chin. These four are EEG, which I'll kind of get to in a second here. That's what tells us if, if you're awake or asleep. Uh, then the important ones for purposes of this are flow, chest, and abdomen. So flow is the cannula that's in your nose. And then sometimes you'll have a little thing coming off it that gets your oral breathing. Okay, chest is the belt around here. Abdomen is the belt much lower around your belly button. And those are called effort belts. And effort being in sleep terms, uh, are you trying to breathe or are you not trying to breathe? So um, this is from my website, freesleepadvice.com. If you go to uh, sleep disordered breathing tag and then you go down to obstructive sleep apnea this is one of the pictures i have in there is is a graphic to help understand obstructive sleep got obstructive sleep apnea so the flow you can see here the person stops breathing try to imagine this as being a like a water balloon half full of water um and you're pinching off the top so it's not you know obviously it's not gonna be open and then the bottom two chest and abdomen those are the belts. And so this is closed off here, but yet you're squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. You're really churning that up. And what that does is the, the, the balloon, the balloon knot, <laughs> the balloon knot is going to be getting just pounded with the acid that would be in your stomach or the balloon. And if you're churning it up, that's causing a lot of inner abdominal pressure. You're getting a lot of pressure inside of that balloon and it, it wants to force up against that inner esophageal sphincter, which is what holds all your food and the acid in. So when you do a, a headstand, you're not having a bunch of acid fall out of your throat. Okay. That's a nice little, little doohickey there. And it can take a little bit of a beating, but it can't take a beating all night long. And every time one of these, if you look on it again, if it's being closed off and yet you're creating all of this pressure from uh, 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 just working it, that's going to break down your upper esophageal sphincter and the acid is going to break it down and then there you have GERD. So it's not like you have all this breakdown and somehow that obstructs your airway. No, your airway is obstructed, which causes all the churning, which destroys the upper esophageal sphincter. Hopefully that makes sense. <sighs> Sorry, I was, that was bugging me. It wasn't, it was, wasn't real. I just said it and I didn't have anything to really back it up. So. Now the way to overcome that is... Is, let me guess, egg whites and kale. Go. 
follow this dietary tips. You want to eat smaller meals so you don't want to overeat and get more organic meat, oh. vegetables, and fruits. You got to be careful over consuming the grains, the pastas, the breads, the chips. All of those things will really cause acid reflux and sleep apnea. <laughs> So yeah, you should have smaller meals. You should try to not eat them before bedtime. But yeah, you're, this dude's he's off. He's off. If you have sleep apnea and you're treating sleep apnea, GERD will go away pretty quickly in most people. A lot of times you'll have damage to the upper esophageal sphincter, upper esophageal sphincter from GERD. But after usually about a month, even in the worst cases, that kind of heals. Uh, people that have reflux with sleep apnea, once they start CPAP, they'll notice a lot of things like aerophasia when you're getting um, air into your stomach. But after a month, that stuff kind of goes away as it heals. But eating um, eating a free range chicken isn't really gonna help that, is it? Yeah, also supplementing with digestive enzymes, probiotics, and apple cider vinegar. So probiotics. Oh God, apple cider vinegar. <laughs> That's great for killing fruit flies. Whew, I'm not drinking it. Enzymes and apple cider vinegar, all of those can help in the natural treatment of acid reflux and reduce sleep apnea. One thing I'm noticing is Dr. Axe has a way better hairline than me. Is getting a humidifier in your bedroom. Oftentimes it's the, uh, you know, the humidity or being too dry in the bedroom actually causes sleep apnea. No, it doesn't. Being dry does not cause sleep apnea. Your airway collapsing is sleep apnea. Humidification doesn't help anything at all. People that have sleep apnea will often wake up with a dry mouth, dry nose, but that has nothing to do with the, humidif the humidity level in the room. It has to do with, consider you take a deep dive in a swimming pool or you hold your breath for a long time. The first thing you do when you come up for air is not take a nice leisurely breath through your nose. No, the first thing you do is you go, I just dried out with one breath doing it. If you do that over and over a night, sometimes three times a minute, sometimes even more than that a minute, up to six times, no, well, it can't be six times, up to like four times a minute, you're gonna be extremely dry when you wake up. That doesn't have to do with the humidification in the room, it has to do with sleep apnea. So again, you kinda, it's like you're saying, uh, you're, you're blaming, you're saying things cause sleep apnea when really those are just symptoms of it. It's not like if you reverse those, somehow you cure it, you're just treating, you're treating a symptom of sleep apnea you're trying to address it and saying that it's what's causing it, and that's not right at all, you jackass. We're looking to getting a humidifier and sometimes an air purifier. Those things can actually help support your body and you breathing better and overcoming sleep apnea. Number five. Yeah, it cures of measles too, I'm sure. Is your sleeping position. Many people with sleep apnea sleep on their back. Some of them sleep on the stomach. You want to sleep on your side. What you want to do is get a good pillow that you're comfortable with lying on your... So this is, I mean, yeah, kind of. People are typically worse on their back. Everyone's not worse on their back. There are people that are worse on their side, especially people that have a deviated septum. There's usually one side that they're worse on than the other. And on their back, yes, in general, people tend to be positional. So you'll be, you're worse on your back than on your side. But people absolutely have sleep apnea on your side. So if home chicken here, Dr. Axe is trying to say that uh, you sleep on your side, everything's going to be hunky-dory. That is not true. Maybe if you have mild sleep apnea, it can be it can be treated. But really, this is one of those things you have to go into a sleep lab. You have to sleep on your back. You have to sleep on your side to actually know, are you okay on your back and on your side? And even beyond that, REM sleep and non-REM sleep, people will be different. So you really have to go into a lab, be tested, so you actually know what stage you're in and what position you're in and what your apnea, hypopnea, and respiratory disturbance indexes are in those positions to truly know. But let's see what Dr. X says. And then you want to get a body pillow, something you can really have in between your knees and hug with your arms. It might be two pillows or it might be one big body pillow, but you want to sleep on your side if you have sleep apnea. What? <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm going to save you money right here. Uh, instead of a body pillow, there's a, there's a guy, he's homeless. He's a homeless guy. We call him Beef Can Willie. He hangs out by my work. This is like a win-win situation. You can bring him home. You can spoon with him. You can drape your leg over him. You have to be careful though. You can't just bring any homeless person home with you to, to, to use as a body pillow. It's a win-win because they're getting a roof to sleep in. It's climate controlled, a bed. And then maybe you buy him breakfast in the morning. You got to be careful though because Toothless Sally is also out there. Toothless Sally poops behind the oak tree. That's not cool. That's not good home training. And so probably not the person you want to use as your body pillow. 
but let's let Dr. Axe finish here. It takes a while to sleep on your side if you've been a back or a stomach sleeper. I know for me, I was a stomach sleeper uh, throughout my adolescent life and got to the point where it gave me back pain. Throw your butt so in the air like you don't side. care. Besides sleeping, it can help. It is not definitely a sure bet though. Just know that. It's best to be tested and find out for sure if it works for you. In the meantime though, if, you're, if you know you have sleep apnea, you're, you're, you're sent in for you know, a study, you're about to be going in for a study, it's probably a good idea to start sleeping on your side and get used to it because in most people, it will mitigate it somewhat, somewhat. Number six is exercise. You don't have to do any type of radical exercise, but just getting out and moving, if you're very sedentary and sitting all the time, you know, that will cause sleep apnea. We really need to open up your airways, improve your lung capacity. The best way to do that. This is stupid. This pisses me off again. These are good. Not These aren't treatments of. These are like preventative measures. If you already have sleep apnea, exercise does not cure sleep apnea. Exercise will help you lose weight so that if weight is a problem and if weight is what's causing you to have sleep apnea, then it might go away. Because remember, if you put on weight, all those soft tissues up in here have just expanded. You've just made them swell. So you lose the weight and you see people have like stretch marks on their back and stuff if they've been obese in the past. It doesn't go away, it stretches the skin out. So now you have this stretchy, flabby skin that's fallen down even though you've lost the weight. So even that's not like a surefire bet. Again, this is just a little, it's a little misleading to me. Um, so yeah, exercise, being sedentary. Being sedentary is not a great thing. Exercise is a good thing and it will help keep weight off and weight can cause sleep apnea, but just sitting in a chair, if you just sit down a lot, it doesn't cause sleep apnea. Again, crowding of the airway causes sleep apnea. It is sleep apnea. Weight training or doing burst training is fantastic mm, as well. But burst. really increasing your oxygen capacity. Cycling is fantastic. Swimming is great. Running is great. But cycling and swimming especially are great ways to open up those airways. What about like basketball or like tennis? Number seven, use essential oils. Specific oh, you lost me. Essential oils. Peppermint oil and lavender, a blend <laughs> of peppermint and lavender. lavender. Okay, if you take the lavender bottle and you, you prop it into your airway and that holds open your, your throat, that's gonna cure sleep apnea. You can put about anything in your throat. Just make sure you drill a little hole through it and it holds open your airway. What the hell, essential oils? Calms your body, peppermint opens the airways. Eucalyptus and chamomile are other essential oils you might try. Those are the four most effective. Have you ever tried taco grease? As long as it's free range taco oil. For a more in-depth guide on how to overcome sleep apnea, check out my website, it's dracax.com. Do you have to pay for a membership? Um, that's D -R -A -S -S oh, I think we've heard enough out of him. So he makes some good points as far as just how to treat your body and good stuff to eat. But none of this stuff is going to cure sleep apnea. He, the title of this is, is, you know, cure your sleep apnea. It's not going to cure it. It's a good diet. I don't know about all the organic stuff. I don't really get into all that stuff. All right. I just try to eat lean meats. A lot of fruits and vegetables, like the man said. That's about it. Try to watch my portions. I don't pig out a lot at night. I try to leave several hours before I go to sleep. In your stomach at first, you're like, God dang, I'm hungry. But after a while, your body just kind of gets used to it. Not really a big deal. A lot of this stuff, it's, it's not treatments for sleep apnea at all. It's good body maintenance. It's just good stuff to fuel your body with. Um, a lot of that oil stuff, that's stupid. That's just so dumb. Anyway. That's the linky lefty. Sorry, this I feel like this is somewhat of a shit post, but eh, what are you gonna do? You can't win them all. Guess what? I have a bunch of videos coming out. I have a couple more mass videos I'm gonna be putting out. I just have to edit them. They've already been filmed. I've been getting used to new equipment. I got a new microphone. That's like the easy part. I have a new uh, computer with new editing software, and I'm really struggling with it. So bear with me. Uh, again, give this a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, if you wanna help us out in the description below, I'm gonna be putting some things like PayPal, uh, if you wanna to donate to us, Patreon. And if you wanna shop Amazon, just it doesn't cost you any more. I just have a referral link, or I'm sorry, an affiliate link in there. You can use help me out. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.